Over here, stranger. Hello and welcome to PlayStation Access. My name's Rosie and I finished Resident Evil 4 Remake, a game where Leon S. Kennedy may have a terrible time, but you won't. Thanks to these expert tips we're about to give you. And the fact the game's brilliant. We'll cover how to find more money, making your ammo last, which weapons we favour, and how to unlock and use the trinkets you really want. Whether you're a seasoned Resi Pro or playing the series for the first time, we've got everything you need to ensure you get the most out of the game. If you're looking for something specific, we've got time codes in the text description. And if you find the video helpful, please click the thumbs up and subscribe to PlayStation Access for more videos like this. Take care of yourself, buddy. It's tricky to offer general tips about combat, as each encounter has an enemy mix of its own. The key tactic is to stop yourself getting surrounded and learn to love Leon's sprint. Closer enemies are harder to target and force you to parry more, eating through your knife durability. Running away isn't cowardly, it's sensible. You can turn 180 degrees on the spot by holding back the left stick and tapping R1, giving you space to sprint away and perform another 180 twist to shoot your pursuers. Even better, try to lead enemies into bottlenecks. Think the tight alleys in the opening village, or staircases, or corridors in the castle. Grouping enemies is good for shotguns with widespread or a deadly grenade toss. Another great choke point is vaulting through floor level windows or over fences. As enemies slowly climb over, you can land easy shots. When enemies are grouped, they're easier to scatter with one of Leon's melee attacks. Shoot an enemy in the knee to stagger them and press X to send them and nearby buddies flying. The stagger and melee combo is a great way to conserve bullets, so familiarize yourself with it as early as possible. But one thing to note, if you're too far from a staggered enemy, think twice about trying for a kick. You're more likely to run into the worst hug of your life. Outside of crowd control, certain monsters require special treatment. When you meet dogs, run away and force them to come to you. They normally group up and attack from tricky angles. They're faster than villagers, so a shotgun in close quarters is a good way to catch them out. Neckhole parasites are nasty up close, but can be killed instantly with flash grenades. Los Plagas are vulnerable to light. For basic parasites, a rifle shot gets the job done and saves your precious flashbangs. Keep those for when there are multiple parasites at once, especially the rooms with the red zealots who cause the parasite to awaken, or when you start meeting the stronger parasites with the four-way jaw. These guys eat bullets like I eat shreddies, so flash them away. I also like to use the flash grenades on the free roaming parasites. These guys move between hosts and can be a big drain on ammo. Christ. I mentioned the red zealots there. These guys make every fight 10 times harder as their chanting staggers Leon and erupts parasites from nearby monks. Make them a priority in any fight. They'll often hide on higher ground, so sniping them with a rifle or chucking a grenade their way is recommended. From the castle forward, you'll also get shielded enemies. Wooden shields can be easily shot, but for metal barriers, target the legs to trip and expose them for proper gunishment. Leon also has to take on the Garadors in the castle. These clawed brutes are blind, but find Leon by sound. With a weak spot on their back, the key is to crouch and sneak up to get a stab attack on them, avoiding any noisy chains. Once stabbed, move far away and crouch to give him some space to cool off before repeating. Later, you fight two at once. It's hard not to make noise as there are other enemies, but the Garadors will kill them for you. Once it's just you and the monsters, you can shoot the bells to draw them towards the noise, opening their backs for easy attacks. Finally, the Regenerators. Every bit as horrible as they were in 2005 but also every bit is susceptible to the attachable biosensor scope you collect in the system's room. The key to killing them is to hit glowing parasites inside their bodies. When the regenerator crawls on the floor, the parasites are harder to hit, so get some distance from them and wait for them to stand back up. Even better, take shots at them before they're properly activated. You can target sleeping regenerators in their tanks, and can also use the biosensor to spot them inside these sacks before they pop out for a surprise attack. And while we're talking biosensor, you can use it on any Ganados with a parasite head to see a weak spot for a quicker kill. What with bullets being as versatile as they are, so much of Resident Evil 4's challenge resolves around efficient ammo management. In combat, there are a couple of great tricks for stretching ammo further. 
The most crucial is letting enemies kill each other for you. There are often villagers throwing dynamite, but resist the temptation to always target them first. They're throwing explosions towards you, which is the same place the other villagers are shambling. So let the booms do the work for you. The same goes with traps. Resist the temptation to shoot or defuse tripwires and instead lead enemies towards them for free kills. Similarly, if there are bear traps, position them between you and enemies. They can trigger them too, and using a melee kick on a trapped villager takes their leg off for an instant no-bullet kill. With ammo being so precious, we suggest saving ammo crafting for when you desperately need it, rather than guessing what you may need soon. The action pauses while you craft, so you can save it for desperate situations. A quick note on health items. As is the resi way, it's all about combining herbs to make them more potent. Two greens are better than one, and a green and a red is even better than that. Same works here, though you also have yellows in the mix. Any mixture containing a yellow permanently raises Leon's maximum health, so these are super important. Always combine yellows with red herbs, as these amplify the effects. That said, as precious as yellow herbs are, don't be tempted to trade spinels for them. There are enough yellow herbs in the world to maximize Leon's health without buying extra. You can also get health back by eating eggs, vipers and fish. The latter are always worth looking for. You can stock up on them in the lake by harpooning them from the boat, but it's always worth searching any body of water just in case some are swimming about. They fill a lot of inventory space, but are basically free health items. And who doesn't love a bit of cod? Next up, inventory management. That thing where you struggle to fit your holiday clothes into a suitcase? Well, this is that, but with guns and eggs. The easiest way to lighten the load is to buy attaché case upgrades from the merchant whenever available. Bigger sizes are offered in chapters 2, 4, 9 and 13. But even then you'll still fill it in quickly. The easiest way to squeeze more items in is to press L3 to auto-sort and optimize your space. A messy case with lots of individual gaps can often be arranged to fit more. No more playing Egg Tetris like we did back in 2005. Secondly, you can send weapons and attachments to storage from your inventory. Just select the option from the drop-down menu. Come on, get that magnum out of there. This is Resi! You only ever use those things on the final boss! And while you can't store herbs or food in storage, you can send teleport first aid sprays. So feel free to send and store them for a rainy day. Of course, to buy bigger inventories and all that stuff to shove in it, you need money. There ain't no currency exchange in this Spanish village, so let's start with the most obvious. Soon as you can, trade spinels for the treasure maps from the merchant to mark your map with the most valuable hidden items. Then keep a close eye on the map so not to miss them. Many are in metal pots. Be careful when shooting them to make sure the treasure won't get dirty when it falls. Shoot this rotating pot when it moves away from the mucky well, for example. But this doesn't mean relying on the map alone. You can also shoot down birds' nests and birds that make them for extra gold. One of my favorite tricks from the original Resi 4 still works here. Throwing a grenade at this batch of crows for a mega payday! Also, learn to backtrack. Each of the game's three regions has keys that open locks across the map, as well as including spots you need to tag team with Ashley. Handily, these are marked on the map so you don't forget them. Trickier are locked drawers. Each uses one small key to unlock, which are harder to come by. Proving yourself a master of unlocking earns you treasures and gemstones, which can be slotted into some treasure. If a treasure doesn't have slots for jewels, sell it right away. If it does have slots, hold on to it until you have the best gemstone combos. The game gives you a lot of stones over time, so patience pays off. On the in-lane treasure screen, you can press square to see how gem combos multiply the worth. But to really benefit, you want to form these patterns with the most expensive jewels you can. They're worth more as you move right to left. The 1.2 multiplier for two gems of the same color is more valuable if you do with two reds instead of two greens. Finally, if you're really desperate for change, sell ammo you won't use. I rarely use a submachine gun, so bagged myself some extra pocket money. Not bad. Well, Let's talk about weapon upgrades. New. One big change in the remake is that selling an upgraded weapon to the merchant gets you back most of the money you put into it making it less punishing to replace weapons. We recommend selling the W870 shotgun for the riot gun and the SRM1903 for the stingray. Those two will happily carry you to the end of the game. 
Pistols are trickier to call as they have very different behavior. Most Access members like the Red Nine, which you can find after the Del Lago fight by sailing to the boat in the middle of the lake. Best of it, it's free. Though some of Access swear by the Punisher as it penetrates multiple enemies at once. Its final upgrade boosts that to five times penetration, making it great at chewing through enemy groups. If it helps you, pressing square on the upgrade screen lets you compare stats, even seeing how its maximum stats will eventually stack up. That's what you're working towards, so it's worth bearing in mind. More upgrades appear the deeper you get into the story, so don't assume you've maxed a weapon out. Always see if the merchant can do more. Finally, definitely upgrade the combat knife with durability and power. The ability to parry more attacks will save you on so many deaths and so much health that the money is never wasted. If you can't upgrade it, it means you need to repair it first. Give that the care it deserves, mate. Likewise, buy the body armor, which takes the sting out of later locations, though like the knife, you will need to pay a small amount to repair it. Always worth doing before a boss fight. The remake introduces attaché case customization. You can alter the case itself and attach up to three trinkets. Think of these as perks that can lend you an extra hand. The secret to effectively using these new features is to change often and react to your needs in the moment. The regular silver case encourages handgun ammo drops, which is handy when you're finding your feet, but we also recommend trading spinels with the merchant for the black case, as it increases drops for large resource, which is the key ingredient for rifle ammo and, crucially, flash grenades, which given their instant kill powers for parasites become hugely valuable in the later acts of the game. It's also worth spending spinels on the red case, as it boosts red herb drops. But you only need to equip this for short stretches. Harvest a few red herbs and then head back to the typewriter to switch back to your case of choice. Repeat the switch whenever you have green or yellow herbs in need of punching up. Likewise, trinkets. Some are only valuable in exact moments. The trinket that decreases the price of the merchant upgrade should be equipped at the typewriter by their cheerful cockney, and then unequipped once you've benefited from the discount. Also, if you have trinkets to boost health from eggs or eating vipers, only attach them if you have that unholy dinner waiting for you. Generally, the best trinkets to keep are the ones that boost ammo produced from crafting. Combined with the large resources of the black case, you'll be stocking up easily. There you are. We got a new game for you, stranger. You're gonna take it for a spin, right? Ah, the shooting gallery. This is where you earn tokens for unlocking new trinkets, but it's just a damn good time in itself. Fundamentally, this is a test of aiming skill, but there are a few easy tricks to start getting S ranks and rarer gold tokens. For starters, remember that you can strafe. Sometimes you can get a better shot by shifting left or right. Crucially, you want to reach the bonus round, no matter what the cost. The criteria for these is written at the bottom of the challenge once you've attempted it. Sometimes shooting a sailor is okay. If you need to hit all pirates in a tight time limit, a sailor's sacrifice can make that task easier. When you do activate the bonus round, use the opening title to reload. In rounds with dual weapons, each gun is there for a specific task. The rifle shoots through multiple targets, so it's good for moving pirates who overlap. But when pirates are in front of sailors, you want the pistol to prevent accidental double kills. The TMP is for killing clusters of enemies that would waste a pistol clip. Here's the really important bit. Before you use your tokens, make sure to save at the typewriter. There will always be one outside the gallery by the merchant. This way you can reset if the trinket prize machine gives you something that isn't useful. It's not just the type of tokens that affect the prize you get out, but the order you put them in. A gold silver silver will unlock a different prize to a silver gold silver. So don't feel bad about reloading to try different combos until you get the best possible outcome for your current token haul. Now hopefully with all of these tips at your disposal, you are a Resi 4 Remake Pro. But if you have any more you'd like to share, feel free to stick them in the comments. Then like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this, and hit that notification bell to make sure you're always up to date with everything from the world of PlayStation. Thank you all so much for watching.